Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM20. It's Career Mode, episode 168. We're at Trino Adriatico at stage 5 of 7, and it's a top 5 overall objective. Currently, Hillary Breck sits 3rd overall, so we're in good shape so far. We've got to get through this punchy stage without any losses of any sort. And I don't really have punchers here, so we'll have to be careful on how we approach the uh, finishing line. And then, uh, we've got a short 10 kilometer prologue slash time trial in the final stage that will definitely impact things. Now, our better rider for that is AFP. But for Breck, uh, he's okay, but he does have That's a better prologue than AFP. So actually, they'll be in no similar chance. state. AFP sits 10th overall, Breck, Breck just, just 12 seconds on. down. So fairly good shape, but again, not that great of a time trial. Is. So uh, if we can, we'll try to take something out of today's stage 79 riders left in the peloton and getting smaller so that's a good sign as we go to hit this climb uh final time we hit this one oh no 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 actually no this is the finishing little sequence so um that the actually kind of makes me happy this is fairly steep it's short but it's fairly steep for the moment it's back together but you can see that there, there's definitely an impact now 16k to go here's where that finish line is there are just 15 also, the KOM left. kind of in right there in the same place. All right, 61 riders left in the peloton. 12k to go. Kolk, first one to fade, but otherwise, the team's in great shape. And with 11k, I definitely want to get our the sprint train on the, the go. The there we go, nine and a half. Good timing for it. We've we've got the riders. Now we want to ride for Breck and AFP. And then we'll have Talpov, uh, Millar, Kolda, and Killen just to lead this thing out. Kolk, Kolk's done. They're just going to sit in place. Well, let's get Kolda's gel as well. And actually, Kolda's slightly further ahead, so let's just start with Kolda straight off the bat. Alright, folks, here we go. What can we do on this stage? Can we improve our position or at least, very least, maintain? I would expect we're still going to have a fairly sizable group at the finish line. 7k to go now. And we are emerging out front. Let's go ahead and get Noir's gel. And then we will get Talpov's gel. And then we're going to have to push pretty dang hard. AFP and Breck are in great shape, so we can attack this thing pretty hard. It's a short climb. Four and a half K to go. Gel. And then we'll get Brex in a moment. Okay, Kolda out of red bar, but he's got that little bit of yellow. However, it's not going to be enough, so let's out. just keep these on pushing. Because there's the top right there. And then it's a final last little attack. Killen gets right to the top, but then he's out. Now we have uh, Millar to finish things off. 2k to go. Oh, Roglic and Craig Anderson going down, and just 29 riders left as we there approach we the final the kilometer. The up. For the line. Ah, we, we just don't have any sprint. We don't have any sprint. Mohoric, Pavel Rodriguez, Rimko Evenepoel, 1, 2, 3. But Brex right there. So is AFP. Still a sizable group. But I doubt that any contenders uh, have been back, Marcus, have missed be out on that. But there's the gaps. So final stage, and I'm going to show you this one in its entirety as I go through the process uh, that I don't often put up on camera of how I'm always trying to use each and every rider to prepare for our leaders. And you can see Kolk here. I'm starting at a 76. That's the base. If you're on flat terrain on a time trial, no matter the distance, 76 is usually the go-to. And then I'm watching what is their time trial prologue rating. So today for Kolk, we're looking at a 78, 76. So we're looking basically a 76. And that's pretty solid. And then effort standard is a 76. But you can see Kolk is actually doing a little bit better than expected on a 76. So it looks like we can just about get away with, I think because of how short it is, going a little bit harder. You could probably do a 77, 78 for the entirety. We're going to attack the, 
the final 100 meters or so and try to pull back a little time. But that's 39 seconds. That's a small gap relatively in the scheme of things. And we're going to have to watch out, though, because half a minute is going to have an impact. So 76, we don't have to go that soft, but it looks like we can go a little harder. 77 or 78. Let's see what happens if we go 78. We'll get David Killen on that. Now he's a 77, 76. So again, we're looking at about a 76 base, 74 resistance. So it's okay. Uh, we'll see if 78 is going a little too hard if he comes up short. He is definitely on a little bit of a deficit. Does not seem to be covering it off. So maybe we are looking at a 77. But anyway, this is the process that I go through with the initial riders of trying to manage the effort because you want it to be consistent. That's the fastest way by far. If you go hard and fast for one little chunk and then slow for the rest, you're just not going to make it. And you can see backing off to a 77, he made it to the line. Heart rate never dropped. So he ran out right at the finish or would have gone 10, 15, 20 meters more. That it's only one second faster, but that's what we need. So 77 seems to be about right. You might be able to push 78 near the end. Talapov, next one to set off for us. Okay, not a good prologuer at all. He's a decent time trialist, but uh, we'll see how that 77 does then. So this is a 70 prologue, 77 time trial, so I'd say that's probably a 71. Great resistance, though. 79 today. He's an okay time trialist, but this is very much mostly prologue. In terms of that split, right, we're looking at uh, five. There's a new reference time coming in. Joseph Berry goes top. Uh, 5K versus, oh gosh, is it 30? The 25K in between, 17 and a half split. Sorry, I didn't notice that Millar had already gone. I was thinking out loud. This is poor time trialist. Uh, Kolda, ready to set off. We don't need to worry about Millar anymore. Let's focus on Kolda, who's also going to actually struggle similarly. Even then, we're only talking about a dozen seconds further off. And, and that's kind of the thing, is it's all relatively tight. But a great time trialist is going to be a half minute faster and that's just going to hurt. That was a minute and a half from Malar, so you can see just how poorly uh, that's where the time losses are, are the, the ones in the mid 60s, which Colt is going to be the same. But AFP, which by the way, on that last stage, there was one rider who missed out. Single rider missed out and that moved AFP up into ninth place. So the rest of the top 10, uh, made it unscathed to the finish line and AFP great time trialist in 82 but only a 70 prologuer so uh, probably look in let's see 84 72 I'd say maybe a 74 that pushes it up just a little bit uh, that's not gonna make for a terribly good time I would imagine he's 20 seconds behind yeah just about but we're not worried about Joseph Barry. It's the other riders. Uh, Bre oh, Breck on a minus two. That's not helping. Come on, game. AFP should have a decent time here. He should be about 30 seconds back. 40. Well, yeah, to Joseph Barry. A little bit better on the timing. This is going to be off, though. 22 seconds. Three seconds behind AFP. The uh, resistance and the prologue really hurting him. Minus two to each of them. And that time trial rating is barely, barely being used today. Fifty-one seconds down overall. That hurts. That's more than I expected. Uh, so far, we've only seen one rider going anywhere near the top twenty, though. From, I think, the top ten. So, if that's the case, we're looking at none of them being within. Rodriguez is the one who got in there, fifth place, seven seconds for him. That's going to move him up. But can we hang on to a top five? Can we hang on to a top five? I'm not sure that time was going to be enough. 52 seconds down. Venipole, Yamaguchi, Barrow, Rodriguez, Breck, fifth. Fifth place, he does hang on. Yes, okay. AFP also hangs on to his ninth place at 206 down. But Breck does it actually comfortably. It was half a minute good. And three seconds behind Rodriguez. Uh, okay, okay. That's, that's what we needed.
and see how we just smothered all the other teams in the under 25s category. Rodriguez no longer under 25, so he is now right at 25 years old. Uh, three seconds. So Hillary Breck, just three seconds off of Pavel Rodriguez's pace. That means he's a future world champion, right? Yeah, no, <laughs> not necessarily, but still good showing. All right, so we are at Milano San Remo, first monument, and excited to see what we can do. We've got a team that is both quick in terms of sprinters, but then we've also got some guys that are a bit punchy here a little bit of in terms of support climb so we'll see how that kind of balances out we've got seven riders in the breakaway they've only got four and a half minutes and the chase was pretty hard for a while so this guys had to work pretty hard to establish that breakaway which means they'll they'll not have as much energy later on i, I think four and a half minutes albeit a, a large quantity of time that's really not that much for a race such as this i mean we've still got over 200 kilometers to go and it's already been nearly 100k so far. Speaking of nearly 100k so far, it's time to get water. It's a little past the 180 point that I want, but oh, we'll get down to that on the next checkpoint. So we'll still need to get water two more times before the finish. Alright, the big climb of the day is coming up, but the nice point is it's really at the midpoint. So as long as you don't get dropped, you are just fine. I will only tune that up ever so slightly before we reach that climb to 77. I think uh, with our front position uh, we should be just fine with the climb coming up. Pace right now isn't that bad. We've pulled back a minute on the break but that's very minor. I mean we're doing 30 to 40 K per hour which really isn't that much. All right here we go on to the climb. 11.8 kilometers, six, 687 meters at just over 3%. Very minor, very mild. It's just that it's ever so slightly long. Most of the way up already. And uh, that stage of the race is now behind us, and we are still comfortable, still looking good. Breakaway, that gap held firm at three and a half minutes through there. And just a little bit of fatigue in the team. Now at 130 kilometers. That next opportunity for water is coming up and also into the happy zone. Now while we hit this short little hill, I'll use Merino to go back and get that water. Drop it back very quickly through there. Through the descent, he's on his way back forward. We're now inside 120, so we're good on our window. And nobody was left without water for any extended period of time, so we're good. Gaps down another minute, now at two and a half. Now we're inside 100k, so now things are going to start to matter. Now, the stamina part, green bars, the one we got to watch out for. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Breck, you can see, is a little so soft, a little weak. Uh, Moreno, Talapov, feeling it. Reykjavich, feeling it a little bit. But all in all, we're, we're doing fairly well, considering just how long we've already been on the road. We've already exceeded what a regular race is going to be. Two riders have been dropped. Uh, but our team's in good shape. Now, here's the next climb. And really, this is it until we get into those final two where we've got the punchy bit and uh, maybe have sprinters at the end. The sprinters are the favorites for this race, but we'll see. Uh, they often aren't there. When we get to the end on this one, Vermark's been dropped. Fall in a pack. Apparently, uh, the leader is on the ground. And he's back up and moving. Okay, so we get him as he's coming back up, and there's the back of the peloton already. But how is he on the downhill? 75. He crashed off, and he's not getting up. Oh, I hope it isn't too serious. Another crash there. Fall just took place in the pack. Several riders Left side of the road. The That's a lot of riders down for that one. Nice long descent. Good opportunity to get back on. To take a little bit of risk on the descent here. It's pouring down rain. That's reason why we've had multiple crashes already but you can see heart rate wasn't even 140. Sepulveda, Bovin, these guys are coming back to help a, a leader. Okay heart rate's now coming up and there's more riders back here so it looks like uh, this is kind of by design. These guys are back here trying to help riders recover to the leader. They, they're not just sitting up. 
There you go. Okay, we do not need to go to 99 now. Out. Vermark, just get back in a position. Murakami crashed out. I think he was in Vermark's crash. Or maybe that next crash. It might have been that next crash after the one that Vermark was in. Another attack in the leading group! Okay, it looks like there's attempted attacks, but it's way too far out. 50k to go. This is... Uh, actually, here's what we're going to do. Mark, you're furthest back. And get water for us. Final time. He'll recover. That'll bring his heart rate down. Oh, come on. He just got split off. I hate, hate when that happens. A couple of teams have set themselves up as pacemakers for the pack. They obviously don't have anybody in the breakaway Very group. much not going to be our favorite now after that. Yeah. Eric Butts on a plus three. And then we've got McKinney and Reykjavich, so ultimately we're going to try to go for the sprint on this. For Mark still hasn't even gotten up there with the water. I mean, it's been 20k since I first sent him back. Luckily, we had water late enough before that it hasn't impacted us. I, I don't know when the last time was that I asked for Mark to get water, but uh, I think he's forgotten how to do it. <laughs> Look, I got the stars and stripes on. I shouldn't be doing this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you should be doing, though, is holding your position. Please, thank you. And uh, go ahead and protect your teammate, because you don't have much left in the tank. Uh, uh, speaking of not having much left in the tank, where we are now. 82. Everybody's up here. We're hitting the penultimate climb. Just like that, he's only just now gotten back in place. Uh, for Mark, needs to gel up, because, you know, he's... That messed up after that one. And we're seeing a huge influx uh -oh, in pace. The quick in the pace. These guys dropped back a lot. Breck, the only one who's still up there. 24.5k. No splits at this point, though, so we're looking good. For Mark's gone back. There's the top. Still There's together. As long as we don't have so a crash on the descent, we're going to be fine for that final push now. 20k. And we'll definitely sprint train the final one. And we're going to have to set that up here fairly soon. For Mark's not going to be involved. Uh, Telepov needs to start pulling through. And the Kine just needs to follow, and then we're going to kind of pick riders up. Reno needs to gel up. 15 kilometers to the finish line. And then we'll take a look at Makine and Reykjavich. Uh, they're both on zero for the race day conditions, so Reykjavic, 80-82. And how's the punchiness? He's a 67.73. Tele oh, telepod's done. 81.81. Uh, Resistance is good. 68.75. Yeah, McKinney looks a little bit better than Reykjavik. So we'll, we'll bring you on up. Okay, we'll put you on the back of Eric. And then Breck. And then Reno. And let's get Moreno moving. Ah, uh, shoot. Those guys are set at 82s. Forgot to change that. Not a fan of what I do that, because it complicates things when you then get your riders going one by one. Come on, Moreno. 12k to go. We are not in the ideal position here. You see that? You're going to the pain on the faces at the back of the there. There's Rekovic. There's McKinney. The tempo has slowed down. Something might be cooking. There are just 10 kilometers left. Okay, here we go. Come on. Oh, come on, Breck. Pidcock. Uh, Breck, now you're caught. Oh, my goodness. Pidcock squeezed him. And then he the uh, buckled line, under the pressure, apparently. The there you go. Here's sprint. the push. Can't There's what we needed. The There's what we needed. 7K to go. Rikovic, McKinney are surviving. They're hanging in there. It's time to gel up, though. Okay, Pidcock, Craig Anderson are attacking. We're almost to the top. Breck, you're done. Okay, on to Eric Butt. Except for you're supposed to be pushing. 6k to go. 
Two riders with an ever so slight escape with 5k to go. Oh shoot, no wonder he there wasn't overtaking him. That stupid 82 thing. <laughs> 5k to go. Breck is... Uh, who's better descending? Because they're both... Neither. <laughs> they're both poor descending. Uh, okay. Well, Breck has more energy. Oh, sorry, Eric, but has more energy. And is a better sprinter, so Breck, 4k. You need to attack and catch up to those guys if we're going to have any chance of catching them, which, yes, that involves taking a little risk here. We need a top 10, as long as we don't take out all four of these guys. I'm thinking about the win at the moment. 2.5k, so Breck sprinting. Eric Butt sprinting, 1.8. Reykjavik, 1.2. McKinney the for the line. This is easily a top 10, but is it a top 3 at least? McKinney really is going to get there. Vanderpool hangs on for the win. Finish. Chimias just beats out Bikini, but it's a podium. Mike Kinkis, fifth. We needed a top ten. We easily got it. Reykjavik was seventh. Good result. Eric Butt, thirteenth. This was a pretty sizable objective at three stars, so I'm, I'm happy with that one. We did well. We not only got the top ten, not only got a top five, but we get a podium. Good result. Not the win. I was hoping for it, but Vanderpool deserved that. That was a good ride from him. Chamias also just nipping us on the line. He was the favorite. We weren't even... Oh, no, we were. McKinney, I think... No, McKinney wasn't even on the top ten list, was he? It was Eric, but... No, it was McKinney. McKinney was, like, just inside one-star favorite for the day. So, take that. Good result. Vermark, though, 110th. Ouch. Ouch, dude. All right, well, uh, another short episode, but uh, next week things will be back to normal. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button. See you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.